In East Africa, along the Rift Valley, live the Maasai. This film was made in the Western Highlands along the Kenya-Tanzania border. The Maasai are animal herders. They despise hunting and do not grow crops of any kind. Land is held in common, and animals are the only form of wealth. The Maasai love their cows. Each animal has a name, and men compose long poetic songs in praise of their herds. or prophet, has a large village. He has many cattle, many sheep and goats, and many women and children. The Maasai conception of wealth is different from our own. Women and children, as well as animals, make up a man's estate. A man's riches may be measured not only by the size of his herds, but also by the number of his human dependents. Wealth involves rights over people, as well as rights over things. It is a prosperous and leisured society. In good years, there is plentiful pasture land. <laughs> the Liban is especially rich. He has 12 wives, more than 60 children, and numerous daughters-in-law. The Maasai use everything produced by their animals. They eat their flesh and drink their milk. They make thongs and bed coverings from their skin and containers from their horns. <laughs> Each woman builds a house for herself and her children. In prosperous villages, they waterproof the roofs with pure cow dung, rather than with a less effective mixture of dung and mud. A woman establishes her husband as a man of property by building a house, milking his cows, and bearing him children. But she has no rights of ownership over any living animal and must live under the protection of a male herd owner, be it father, husband, or son. This woman, No Piaya, is the Liban's sixth wife. 
At about 30, a Maasai man becomes an elder, a respectable citizen, entitled to marry and live in the villages. They are the people who make the decisions about the herds and flocks. But before this, men serve as warriors, or moran. After circumcision, at about the age of 16, men belong to the army. Before colonial rule and nationhood, they raided neighboring tribes for cattle and fought to extend the boundaries of Maasai land. Moran do not marry and do not live in the villages. They have special encampments and spend most of their time in the forest which surrounds the village. When they do descend upon a village, it's the little girls who are their companions and who run their errands for them. Girls themselves are circumcised in a ceremony which the Maasai think of as the female equivalent of male circumcision. A girl leads a rather carefree life. She has little work to do. She is flattered by the attentions of handsome warriors and she has a secure home in her father's village. <laughs> As she gets older, she is concerned that she not become pregnant until she has been formally initiated into maturity. A girl's circumcision ceremony begins as a quiet family affair. It is her farewell to childhood and also to her father's village. She will leave to be married soon afterwards. This girl is going to marry one of the Liban's sons, so she will be coming to live in the Liban's village. The ceremony is expected to transform a giggly girl into a mature and thoughtful woman. Her head is shaved, she relinquishes her childhood name, and she gives her jewels to a younger sister. All this marks the shedding of her previous identity. Once circumcised, she is thought of as a woman, considered fertile and entitled to have children.
After the circumcision has been performed, the branches of a special tree are brought to mark the house where the girl is recovering. For the rest of the day, people from all over the countryside gather to drink honey beer and to celebrate the emergence of an adult who will increase the fertility of the whole community. The mother and father are smeared with red ochre. Later, at the climax of the party, the mother will anoint the clothes of the women with butter, and the father will put on women's jewels to honor his status as the father of the newly fertile woman. <laughs> it's a joyous occasion, especially for the parents. <laughs> They are proud to announce that their daughter has reached maturity and will soon produce descendants for them. Through her fertility, they are seen to have succeeded in life. The father has already arranged his daughter's marriage to the son of his friend, the Liban. I'm I'm a
Mereka itu kena meta uang murah sebaya yang mereka bayar nengke dua, itu arunya pakai. Ayam mereka bayar nengke dok. Nengke jauh belok dua isu. Nengke orang kara. Tapi mereka lomor uo walai senang. Lemah tengkarai, lemah tengke dok. Pas ini ayam mereka ada nengke dok yang ni, nello dua iki, ada mata kengke isu. Nengke isu ayu kau nak kara, ayu kau tiga lah bayar nengke aku rara kasis. Amu dah lara lalu ibu ni ada orang kasis. Naa naa nak itu a naik dah. Tunggu. Amu tu ibu apa apa wakin nak pun buat isu. Itu mungkin isu. Naa aku rara orang kasis. Itu yang pesu. Anu orang tuan ni lembih isu. Naa aku rara ni naa aku rara ada nyeri. A new bride is brought to the Liban's village to meet her husband and her co-wife Mayani for the first time. Pasi, iya Mayani. Ana, amu, ama, amu dari kor payan lino yang kaki tu, Emba, Mayba, Tugul, Mayba ni nyepi. Ainyo, mumi kita mesti yoga nanti. Ainyo, eh, tenderi kuni kita arah di, naik dua tiga ram. Merah naik bangka mule baik kita mesti ni kita harus payan, ni kita merah angkang ini. Kali, ni meter rono, meter rono. Kakak iyo lo orang tiada apa iyo, na kilometer orang itu ag. Orang tiada, orang tiaga masa. Aisy dah yang kai ni oiling. Amu, kira esy aisy sabuk oiling. Amu kai yang kai, na jenra jemu di bo. Na iya kai yang ngostoru open. Na iya yang ngoringi shu ingkar na negel open. Na iya yang ageri do mira dengan hari. Na yang orang elly puri, na isu yang kita suka mau kan na ena bela nang na iya garar bayar, na sabu kanya malu uli. Ni 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 lebih show ni ni muri show ni ni mungil lah show. Na aku ni ni garar nulu. Aku ni ni amara rak na kayu lah bunga hanya. Mayul mayul. Mujing kani. Orang orang na orang kani na isu. Ni mungkin bukan dia, nasi yang kai. Yang ini kau mera, berapa? Yang ini kau orang kira rabo, nanti ingkis supaya mereka yang muda ini siap. Berapa? Iya ke? Nanti aku orang hidup melalui misteri masa, nasi ayi asapu. When the women of the village see the husband and his companions, they go out to greet them and to look for the bride who is trailing behind. Then they descend upon her, screaming threats and insults to make her cry. All these women have been through this process. They too once left their mothers and everyone they knew to settle in a strange place. Marriages are arranged by men. The bride knows neither her husband nor his village. The ritual dramatizes her helplessness and isolation. She must express her anxieties in front of women who are already established in the village, the same women she will soon rely on for friendship and support. I 
The person whose behavior is most ambivalent is Miami, her co-wife. Miami hurls some of the worst threats, but also seems to protect her new co-wife. No Piaia approaches, and the women pretend to the bride that she's crazy. Women marry elders, so there is an age difference between them. But what matters to a bride is that her husband be an honorable man, for unless he treats her with absolute cruelty, she'll find it difficult to leave him.
next morning, before Mayani lets the cows out, the bride emerges from her mother-in-law's house, where she has spent the night. She will not sleep with her husband for another four days, but she's beginning to feel at ease with his family. The bride's mother-in-law takes her to meet the live on. The bride is an important addition to the Liban's family. She will increase his wealth and prestige and that of his sons. People who live to see the circumcision of many grandchildren achieve a kind of immortality. It is said they do not die, but merely go to sleep. Their names are not forgotten, unlike ordinary Maasai, whose names can never again be mentioned. Again. On her first morning in the village, the bride is introduced to the herd and given milking rights over some of her husband's cows. Her husband selects nine cows, perfect in shape and color, to be the core of her herd. This is an important transaction for her. It begins the herd her future sons will inherit. From now on, she will refer to them as her own animals. After being shown her husband's animals, a new bride tries to increase her herd. She stops anyone she sees and demands a present from them. Not surprisingly, she finds few people around on this particular morning. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> 
The bride is entitled to the milk of her animals as well as to their hides. The animals are not hers to sell or slaughter. Those rights belong to her husband. She holds them in trust for her sons, and she is the one who decides which animals they will inherit. A woman is subordinate to her husband, a man chosen for her, but she is on equal terms with her lover, a man she chooses for herself. often say they dislike being alone, and friendship and affection are very important. <laughs> Women do not rely upon their husbands for company. They depend on their children or turn to co-wives and neighbors for support. <laughs> to be a friend in Maasai is to give generously. Men give away livestock and marriageable daughters, but women have little to give. Women sometimes give away their daughters to their mothers or to barren co-wives. But a mother will never give away her sons, for they inherit her animals and care for her. Without sons, when her husband dies, a woman's animals will be dispersed and she will lose all rights to them. Oh, <laughs> 
Gradually, as they become elders, sons begin to replace their fathers by taking responsibility for their mothers. Towards the end of their active Moranhood, a ceremony takes place, which is the first step in their transformation into heads of families. The mother of one of these Moran has come into the forest with three friends to perform a ritual drama. The drama calls attention to the radical changes in family relationships soon to take place. As their sons become elders, mothers will come to live under the authority of their own children. In the ritual, all the rules of decency which normally regulate family behavior are turned upside down and made fun of. <laughs> First, the Moran prepare a large quantity of liquid fat, which their mothers are obliged to swallow. <laughs> this ritual feeding emphasizes the impending reversal of roles. <laughs> The ritual develops into a mock battle. The weapons are bawdy accusations of incest hurled at each other by the women and the Moran. During the ceremony, mothers and sons can joke about incest, but the incest taboos remain unchanged. <laughs> The ritual plays upon the uncertainties of the new relationships by ridiculing the rules. Yeah. <laughs> 
This is the second time this group of Moran are performing the ceremony with one of their mothers. Last time, the Moran felt the women had outdone them. So this time, they are determined to outdo the women in exhibitions of vulgarity. <laughs> <laughs> All over the countryside, small groups of Moran are performing this ceremony. When each man has completed it with his mother, they return to the villages to prepare for the most splendid of all Maasai ceremonies, Eunoto, which brings active Moranhood to an end. <laughs> Before setting off, the group from the Liban's village is blessed to protect them from the envious gaze of strangers they will meet at the ceremony. At Ayunoto, young men hold the center of the stage. But for their mothers, it is also a time of fulfillment. They have beautiful sons who have grown into men. It is a magical and moving occasion. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>
them around with milk as they enter the ceremonial village. All Maasai, but especially Moran, express their deeply felt emotion in a form of trance. After a Yunoto, Moran gradually take on the responsibilities of elderhood. They begin to marry and take possession of their mother's animals. The only people who might be sad at Eunoto are those without children. To Maasai, the importance of having children is great. It is expressed in a religious concept called Enkishon. Enkishon Enkitok, Kebuliki Maasai Tata. Mureka Maasai Kebuliki. To know what Enkishon Enkitron at Tuishi, they will like you name to ye. Bassi. Now, these dandified and sometimes callous young men 
are always respectful and loving towards their mothers. <laughs> <laughs> One of them has slaughtered a cow to feed the party from the Liban's village. For the mothers, Eunoto is a significant turning point in their own lives. They are proud to see their sons becoming elders who will begin to assume responsibility for their cattle. <laughs> As the end of Eunoto approaches, the mothers shave the heads of the Moran. An elder sprays the assembled group with milk as a final blessing. These young men will soon take wives and assume control over their mother's herds. The women now hope that their men will fulfill their obligations and treat them with consideration. Women blame their dependence on their inability to own animals, but they explain this away in a myth which lays the blame on women themselves. <laughs> Nebu <laughs> 
Niki won a group by Lala or Mogan Javangish young of Wendy Neguagumisi. Niagune Yarabe Gununongishuaba. Megurava Yara, a kid our boy Lala or Megure Yarangish in the Gentoni, and Shamavango Nang in deep. Niago Mara, Yogavana, the Gangishuaka in the Mashom. The Megure Yarana and again to the Rangurta Yar. Niagune Yara did you. Hey, bro. 